Creative are a PC-focused company with a plethora of audio products. Well, that was the case a short while ago, and over the past two years, they've been slowly invading the living room, first with their Stage V1 soundbar. Now, two years later, Creative are back at it again, improving on their original V1 and releasing the Creative Stage V2 soundbar. We've managed to get our hands on one to check out and review. The Creative Stage V2 soundbar isn't really very big at all. The speaker part measures at 3 by 26.8 by 3.94 inches, while the subwoofer is very tall and skinny, measuring at 16.7 by 4.6 by 9.84 inches. Being this size makes the soundbar very universal, and as an example, example, I did have mine set up underneath my PC monitor and plugged directly into my GoXLR mixer. But if you're going to be using it in the living room, then it will definitely look nice and neat on a TV unit or on the wall. The entire front is a speaker grill with two 2.5 inch 20 watt speakers inside. The subwoofer has one 5.25 inch 40 watt driver and combined you have a peak power of 160 watts and an 80 watt RMS. Now it means that the speaker can go pretty loud and will be enough to fill a living room space for a movie night or even some kind of house party for your music. The side panels are matte grey plastic, with the right hand side housing some controls for input and volume up and down, while the left is really just plain. On top is gloss black plastic, it does look very tasteful and will definitely match an array of modern TV units if you're going for a mix and match setup in your living room. So around the back you've got a very generous array of inputs to really make this a soundbar for everything you need in your lounge. The first is HDMI ARC, which enables audio that's playing through your TV to come through the soundbar. There is also an optical input as well as an auxiliary jack for analog sources like your PC. You've got Bluetooth for your phone or tablet for some Spotify music playback and the subwoofer is passive and uses its own connection to plug into the soundbar and the main figure of eight power cable plugs directly into the back of the soundbar too. You've also got wall mounting holes too if you wanted to that clean kind of under the TV look. There's also a very handy remote control that is quite small in size and it's made from plastic which makes it super light. Now controls aren't in an abundance but it's nice that you can control volume, bass and treble levels and also inputs from afar. There are no AAA batteries included, so make sure you've got some handy if you want to use the remote straight away. Just a bit of an oversight from Creative, I think. Now on the remote, there is also access to the surround sound option, which widens the sound stage of audio and also uses the Sound Blaster technology to determine multi-channel audio and fire it out of the soundbar in a directional manner. Now it's not as accurate as say a 5.1 audio system, but it does definitely help with immersion. Now the second option on the remote is linked to dialogue which uses an algorithm to extract vocal audio to enhance them above the action that's taking place on the screen. It is a decent effect but unfortunately does allow the kind of rumbling bass to suffer somewhat. Now watching the opening moments of Star Wars The Force Awakens did sound absolutely wicked. It's a quiet start but dialogue sounded extremely clear over the accompanying orchestral track and once the stormtroopers arrived on that first planet the stomps from their armor running down the ramp of the dropship really did stand out. Laser fire was crisp, but unfortunately explosions did suffer somewhat. But there were moments of excitement when Poe and Finn are trying to escape the hangar in a stolen TIE fighter. The laser fire there, explosions and dialogue of the characters shouting were all exceptionally clear. Now this has come down to a couple of things. I had to maximize the base level five out of five it is on a scale of one to five and i did drop the treble down to three out of five i did also switch on the surround sound capability too and i never opted to turn on the dialogue option as this really just reduced the bass too much and you really lost that pounding feeling that great sound design and action scenes give you like the scene when ray and finn try to outrun the tie fighters in the falcon brilliant at the end of the day, movies aren't all this soundbar is catered towards, and with Creative's roots after all, coming from PC, it's safe to say that I had to run this soundbar through some gaming tests. And I did just that. I used my PC as I'm not really a console gamer, and I must say I was pretty blown away. Playing a few multiplayer rounds of Black Ops Cold War, I could easily hear where enemy gunfire was coming from. It's not positional like a virtual 7.1 headset, but it still gave me a cue to turn left and right to see my foe. And the soundbar really shone during the single player campaign. I myself have just finished Echoes of a Cold War, which saw me use silent weapons, and the just the thud of the silent and sniper rifle was absolutely superb right 
through to the hectic machine gun battle at the end of the level. Now driving around Night City again, Jackie's rumbling engine and the radio backing track really worked well together and it just sounded great. Again, while playing games, I had the surround sound feature switched on and the clear voice feature switched off as you just look just lost too much bass and overall volume in the games I played. Of course, with the Creative Stage V2, you're not going to get the whole sound coming from different parts of the room type experience, nor is it compatible with the likes of Dolby Atmos, DTS, or any other codecs that are sought after from audio and movie enthusiasts. It's just a decent sounding product that has access to Sound Blaster tech. Now also, I'd like to say that the feeling of the subwoofer is room size dependent. If you've got a sizable living room, then the subwoofer isn't powerful enough to send bass ripples through the air to affect you while sitting on your couch. It just gets lost. Now, if you're at your desk though, like mine is, and the subwoofer is by your feet, then it's absolutely perfect. So with all this in mind, Creative does have a pretty decent budget soundbar on their hands, and the Creative Stage V2 will work perfectly in a small room, like an office for your PC or even a small living room, where you're not too far away from your main television. The subwoofer does require some volume to really get it rumbling, which is a shame. Bass begins to feel a little weak at quieter volumes. If you're someone who wants to begin their journey into the world of external sound devices, or want to improve the really gnarly TV audio that your TV will kick out, then there's no reason to ignore the Creative Stage 2. It's budget friendly, coming in at around £99 online, and it still sounds absolutely great for what you're getting. It's just an all around solid 2.1 soundbar setup. So thank you very much for checking out our video review of the Creative Stage V2 2.1 soundbar. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. Please subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos. And also let us know in the comments down below if you would go for the Creative Stage V2, if you would want it for your setup, or what kind of audio solution are you using? A budget audio solution are you using? on your gaming and movie TV setups. Let us know in the comments down below. We also do stream over on Twitch on a Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from 8.30 p.m. onwards. Uh, that's British time. If you wanna come and say hi, ask a question about the video, ask us a general question about tech and what we think about something, then do come over and chat to us over on Twitch. As I say, thanks very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.